Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we have confidence expert Kim Seltzer on talking about easy ways to build confidence around women. We also talk about how to work through conflict, the pros and cons of being single, and does she like you and how to know. All that and more coming up right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Ask Women podcast. Of course, it's me, Kristen Carney, comedian and your host here with Marnie Kinres, best-selling author of Get Inside Her and all sorts of things, wingirlmethod.com. <laughs> and we also have Miss Wonder Woman herself here with us, Kim Seltzer, who's been on the show before. Thanks ha- thanks for coming. Thanks for having me under this beautiful tent that we're in. And I that's love why you suggested one, Miss Wonder Woman, not Mrs. Wonder Woman. Well, unless you're... Unless you're, no, I'm no. not Mrs. Okay. <laughs> you're not Mrs. Wonder Woman. I used to be a Mrs. No longer. But we've been having echoing issues. And so this week, last week we turned the volume down super low. This week what we're doing is we're sitting under a superhero blanket. Yes. So, so under my desk. Under Marnie's desk. So, so imagine we're in a tent. all of this wonderful advice you're getting is coming from an, a, a, three girls in a tent. What do you call it? A fort. A four. Yeah, I know. Four. We're okay. just missing the campfire and marshmallows. We were saying. Thank God, because it's so hot. So this is going to be a very playful episode, obviously. Um, but I wanted to piggyback a little bit on last week's episode, because it was just Kristen and I. And we talked a lot about confidence and what women want. And I wanted to read some quotes that uh, one of my clients has sent in, sent in to me, which is very helpful for confidence boosting, which are very helpful for confidence boosting. And then I wanted to talk to Kim about confidence and what women want, because you, you are a go-to source for knowing what women want, because you work with tons and tons and tons of women who tell you every day what they want. But first... Let's read these quotes. Uh, So this is from Jeremy, and he wrote in that these are great quotes for him that help him build his confidence. One is, be yourself because everyone else is taken. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've heard that quote. Have you never heard it? No. I've heard it five million times. Be a different quote because this one's already taken. Damn. Uh, (laughs) I haven't heard it either. It is a good. playful in the tent. (laughs) It's a good quote, but it's, it is, it's a good quote, but. Yeah. You're like, been there, done yeah. that. Yeah. Let's, let's hear a new one. Courage is the magic that turns dreams into reality. I agree. Yeah. Like Have it? you heard that it one is. before? Nope. Oh, fine. Fresh one for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, courage isn't the absence of fear. It's doing something in spite of it. I've heard that one before, but I still love it. And I think it's, mm. it's, it, mm-hmm. it's yeah. always going to hold true. Yeah. So I think these are fast, uh, fa- fabulous quotes for boosting confidence. But let's, I turned the volume off, I swear to God. Um, and now I want to go to you to talk about what do you think women want? Because we had this quote on the show last week that was basically a woman saying, I want this and I want that. I want that. I want that. And we broke it down to explain what, what this woman and what most women are actually requesting. So from your point of view, what do women want? In a man? In or general. In general. And then in a man. <sighs> you know, it's a broad or, question, or from men. right? Yeah. From men. Well, you know, it's funny. I think each woman wants different things and a lot of it is based on their history and the things that maybe lacked in their previous relationship and so a lot of times women will have these lists and often on their lists are the things that they didn't have before that's a really good point yeah and and so I always tell them be careful of that because your list can also provide it to be a shield from finding love because no one can check off every single thing on the list, but it, it's their fear of getting hurt. So I think in general, I would say the biggest thing that most women want, though, is security and to feel loved and having this reciprocal kind of partnership. But that's such a broad thing. I was going to say, can you break that down for me? Right. Because, it is, because it is pretty broad. It is broad. And, it, and actually, it's different for everybody, you know? And I think it depends on the age of the person. I think it depends on if people have been married before, if they have kids. Because, you know, feeling safe if you have kids is very different than if you're 25 first starting out. Right. So, um, so for me, when I work with people, being a therapist and a coach, I kind of, you know, do a lot of fusion type of coaching, if you will, I like to get a full history on people's journey and what it was and where they are, because I believe our past is connected to the future and the choices we make and the patterns that get created. So, you know, once we figure out kind of where their fears are, then it's figuring out, okay, how do you get past that to get what you want? So do you think a lot of the things on the list are 
It's essentially fears. A lot of times. And women don't realize that, you know. Um, some, some are great. I mean, there's things on the list that I think, you know, I think you should think about what you want in the next partnership. Absolutely. But a lot of times, I, I actually, it's one of my archetypes, my dating archetypes. I call her the list lady because sometimes she has a list so long that it scrolls out, you know. It's like a CVS uh, receipt. Have you ever seen those? It's freaking yeah. long. Oh, my God. It's so Such long. Paper at that it totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, gosh, you're never going to be able to have a man check every single item on that list, you know. Can you give, like, five examples of things that they have on this list that you think are un needed and used as security measures for themselves uh, or, or, or the most common things that you see pop up for yeah women. well the common things is I hear and I don't think this is I'm not saying is right or wrong I'm just some some of the things that are common is that you know they want the guy to have a job that's not a bad thing to have one. no <laughs> they want to be provided for so that that you know a lot of these women maybe have taken care of other guys in the past and they want to have a equal grounds or a guy who can hold his own um, they want sense of humor they want a guy who is confident who has alpha energy um, they want a guy who likes to have fun likes to travel like it could look like that but then it can get like almost too specific where well, he has to be at least six feet tall, and he has to have brown eyes, and he has to live within one minute from me. You know, like, right. the more narrow and specific it gets, the harder it is, and that's when I start seeing the red flags of, okay, so what is it that you're really looking for? I've actually seen that with guys, too. Not like, I mean, I haven't seen lists specifically, but in terms of their dating profiles online, they'll check off, uh, not... They'll check off things like um, they if they don't want kids, they don't. It's not like they're making a list saying I want a woman who doesn't want kids, but it's the things they put that narrow down their selection. That doesn't narrow it down in a helpful way. It it decreases their selection and gives them less people to choose from. So like mm -hmm. I've seen guys put they don't want uh, a woman with kids on their dating profile or a woman who wants kids, and they literally eliminate. 80% of the women on the dating site and then they're like I'm not getting any matches right it's like exactly. well I wonder why not that I'm saying you need to want to have kids but closing yourself off to even the opportunity of certain things is is just limiting your chances of meeting the right person well, I think everybody's scared you know I don't think this is specific to to women right like you know Absolutely. especially the older you get and the more experiences you've had the harder it becomes yeah, you the know more blocks you have exactly I don't know if if something like wanting kids or not you wanting kids should be like your uh, fluctuating zone. I think that if, if you're like, I've dated enough women with kids and realize I do not want them and I don't want women who, ha who want kids. But just be aware put, that you're yeah. closing off a huge but I think section that that's of okay people. To close off to that section. I think things like, you know, you don't play tennis, done. Well, obviously, yeah. Like, but I've I'm had just, people like that. Totally. Before, I just so. think that. You know, I think guys are frustrated because of the selection of women. They're they're not getting this like massive amount of women when they're on a dating site. They're like, I'm not I've not meeting anybody. I've like swiped through everybody and there's nobody. And it's and not online. It's not that you're swiping. It's more of a like you know press a button and you don't want to see women who have this or that. Mm -hmm. But it's I'm just saying if you're feeling like whoa I I feel like there's not even many people in the world, maybe open up your parameters and take away the lists and all of a sudden you'll realize or there's a lot more people. open up your door and start going outside and doing right. things so that your options are, are, the options of what you're looking for are more available to you, not just in one application or, or three right. online dating sites. Right. Yeah, and that's a good point because a lot of the, th that your selection process is a lot different when you're online because you're being more specific than if you're meeting somebody at the grocery store or yeah. out and about. Listen, I go on Amazon, they have pretty much everything, but now in my eyes, I can only go to Amazon. Right. And but if they don't have it, like it doesn't exist out there. And you can be very specific in what you want on Amazon. Right? Very specific yeah. about what you want. But the thing is, like, sometimes when people are like, oh, you can go to this site and find that. I'm like, oh, I could. And so it's just, it widens up my options that happen That's to right. be available. So while online is wonderful, I think it is good to know what you want and be specific about what it is that you're looking for within limitations. Um, but if you're not finding a vast amount of, you know, options for yourself online and you can broaden that a little bit by going on other sites or going out in public right I call people. it um all the I talk about this all the time it's uh creating a diverse 
dating portfolio. Yeah. Right? It's like a financial portfolio. Oh, yeah. You've got to diversify as much as possible in order to get the results. You can't just do one thing. Yeah, you got a little I want, online, a little online. Yeah. Person, I mean, got a friends. Exactly. I want to address what you said, Kristen, because it's kind of true um, in terms of, you know, people not opening up in terms of what their agenda is. A lot of times, like for instance, I'll have a woman who will only go out with guys who say online that they want kids because they want kids. And I say, but you know, you don't know what kind of crazy connections you can make with someone who says they don't want kids, right. but they fall in love with and you. And all of a sudden they maybe it want changes. kids or something. Yeah. Right, right. And so I agree with you on that point. And, and I knew this as a matchmaker. I saw this all the time when I used to match people up and they would be so like locked into just one thing that they, oh no, this guy doesn't want kids, forget it. But then, you know, when I forced the issue and so much magic happened because, you know, a lot of your agenda goes out the door when you're in love. Absolutely. I'll just say that. Yeah. So. Well, I used to say I wouldn't date an older guy, and now I'm dating a guy 13 years older. And there that was because go. when I met him, it was, you know, I would have totally been closed off to it before, but I just, I met him and I was like, oh, I was wrong. I was wrong about what I thought I wanted. What made you open up that possibility? Um, uh, just a, like a deep, deep connection with the person. Like we weren't, we didn't... Um, immediately meet as like a romantic interest it was more friendship ah did you meet online or out just out and about we kind of met in our world like our he, he does some comedy writing and I do as well so but it was online we met on twitter basically yeah oh there <laughs> so you go it was just no, weird but to but piggyback yeah. on top of your point that yeah. like you know love can change a lot of things have you been watching goliath do you watch that no show? okay so I'm on the second season of goliath don't really want to do a spoiler for people. I can't really tell. But there was this one guy that's on the show who's got some crazy fetishes, like extreme. Oh, my like God. He likes people who have their limbs cut off and wants girls that he's with to, like, replicate that scenario. And Is it's Goliath a reality show? No, no, no. Oh, oh I was like, holy <laughs> moly. TLC's going crazy. It's on NBC. <laughs> 8 o'clock every night. Hey, um, gets views. Yeah, but, uh, but so at my, my point being is that this girl, I mean – she has her own background as well, but she ends up doing these things because she really likes him, and she's like, "This is your thing, and this is my thing, and we'll totally do it." So you 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 can adjust things that you would believe in yourself um, once you do care for somebody. So things can alter if you want. So we started off by mentioning those quotes uh, about confidence. Talk about confidence. Yeah, you know, I define confidence a little different than I think most. I truly believe that confidence is experience. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, when you're confident, you have experience in something. You mm -hmm. know, think about your job. You know, when you first got into your job, you weren't that confident. You kind of had to fake it till you made it. And then you got all this experience and then you felt confident. Well, same thing with dating. You know, maybe you've been married and you're out there as a single divorcee for the first time after 25 years. I know that was true for me. Like, I considered myself pretty confident person, you know, before I got a divorce. And when it happened, I was like, oh, my God, like, suddenly I'm, like, really not confident. <laughs> I, and it was it was almost humbling, you know, to really see how that can have a profound effect on the way you view yourself. Yeah. Even. Well, with so. the, the experience, you're absolutely right, because people, when they talk about stand-up comedy specifically, yeah. they say you have to be on stage, like, six or seven times a week, or six or, I'm sorry, a night, no, all week, so six or seven days a week, you need to be on stage several times a night in order to get the confidence that you need to become like a legit comedian. There you go. And so if I, like, I mean, I haven't been doing stand-up for a little bit, but when I do do it, if I go on stage and haven't been on stage in a week, I'm so rusty, it's crazy. I, You would think in your mind, it's like walking. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, once you know how to do it, you know how to do it, but you really lose it. And so with dating, it's gotta be the exact same thing. It is, and that's why I love doing like makeovers and the wing girl sessions because it puts people in that action mode where they can actually feel something, m like movement, right? They can feel in their body something different. Looking in the mirror and seeing themselves for the first time, being a sexy woman when they felt like this frumpy person, it, it, it shifts it shift. your body mm -hmm. and your body language even. And so that makes an impact on how other people view you. And then that increases your confidence. Even like going out doing a wing girl session, 
a woman will say to me, and this happens all the time, oh, I've been doing so much work on myself. I don't understand. Like, guys aren't approaching me. I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. And I'm always like, show me, don't tell me. So we go out, and I'm like, honey, you're not at all <laughs> approachable right now yeah she's like oh you know I I didn't realize that just in the way that she was wearing her clothes she wasn't making eye contact so to your point Kristen I I actually tell people you know for five days just practice looking in people's eyes and saying hi you know like something that might be really scary because they're not used to it you know but they have to do that and practice in order to really be coming and being confident. Well, that leads me to, I think, a good question for guys who are listening to the show. So you're saying most women aren't aware that they are looking unapproachable, right? Oh, my God. So not what, at but all. what do most of these women look like when they're unapproachable, thinking in their mind, I want to be approached? They have the Be- resting bitch face on. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, completely. Mm-hmm. I see it all the time. And, and it's not that these women are bitches. Well, maybe some of them are. But most of the time, it's they're completely in their head they're you know talking to their friends they're waiting for the guy to approach them they feel like it's the guy's move and I always tell you know resting bitch face is like our real is is like our shell it's our protective mode or something I want want guys to use this for themselves so that when they are out and about and they do see girls with like a resting bitch face it's not necessarily a deterrent it's not it in in fact it's actually the opposite right it's an invite so are there things that women do coupled with this to say I want to be approached or is it literally just them saying like in their head when is he going to approach me? well what guys have to realize because I coach guys too and I, and and I, I see guys just f- you know freeze in the field like oh they're oh she doesn't want to be approached there's no way it's not worrying about what other people think or feel it's going after what you want mm-hmm. and I tell both men and women that so get out of your head don't hesitate and just go for it and nine times out of ten, she's going to like it because she never is approached if she always has the resting bitch face, right? right. So actually use that to your advantage, guys. Like, Whoa, it worked. It worked. <laughs> I'm not listening to Kim. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so it's um, – m- but most of the time, women do not even realize that they have that look on their face. They're actually scared. And it's funny because I tell women all the time, guys are more scared – of us than we are of them and they don't believe me oh, no. it's like spiders like don't. we're afraid of spiders right. but fr- spiders are more afraid of us i know they should be <laughs> but here we We've, are we have brooms it, it's like you know it, but shoes. It, the <laughs> both sexes are scared so we're so why at, like it, stalemate why right. do women think it's the guy's responsibility even though he's equally as scared to do the dirty work because women um they, they feel like an alpha man should just have the, the confidence, talk about the co- word confidence, mm-hmm. to go up to the woman and make the first move. But what I tell women is if you're not approachable and sending the smoke signals that you are approachable, they're not going to approach you. Even the most confident man won't, it, like, that won't be appealing like the most for most confident him. A man, exactly. It's just, it, it's just won't, that. that. Exactly. They don't want me, that. Right. Unless she's super hot. <laughs> and then they see it as right. a challenge, like, okay, right? Sure, we'll do it. <laughs> well, actually, super hot women have it almost worse. Mm-hmm. You know, there's an intimidation factor that goes with it. So, you know, a lot of pretty girls that I coach, you know, I said, you know, if you just if you just smile, it it makes a huge difference. And you'll stop getting these assholes approaching you. Exactly. Who want a well, challenge. right. Mm-hmm. And then they complain that like narcissists are in yeah. their life yeah. because those are the ones that you know go up because they think it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it, the cycle begins. Exactly. Okay, let's get to our, our uh, questions from our listeners, but those were all very good responses, which I knew you would deliver. <laughs> I mean, how could well, you not in this fort? In this fort, because I'm surrounded by superheroes. Actually, it's, it's making me think better in here. <laughs> this blanket, though, is under. so thin, I don't think it's making that big of a difference. It's doing something. But we're, we're pretending. Table. I'm we're feeling different in here. Yeah, That's well, good. And for me, at least, my, my yeah, voice you, is bouncing it, off the table. It's working best for Marnie, because she's the deepest so under the table. you actually sound better when you get under yeah, the table. Yeah, this blanket is way too thin. do I need to go under here? Is this better? Yeah. Table with me. Oh. Oh God. God, Now. Okay. So uncomfortable. (laughs) But I have a skirt. Confidence. Whatever. We're all girls. I know. Unless you have a dick fall out of it, we won't be like whoa. That was funny. (laughs) All right. You should be a comedian. I have an idea for the Ask Woman podcast. Could you please go over the pros and cons of being in a relationship from both perspectives, versus pros and cons of being single? Single. Mm. Ooh. Pros and cons. Well, I think... So what do you like about being in a relationship? I love the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. I love feeling like I have someone that gets me and that I get. And I like feeling like I have a a person in the world. 
Like it, that's mm. a great feeling. And I don't know if that's like a security thing or something, it but it, it's, it's my person. What I, I mean, we're long distance, so I'm not really at the point where I dislike being in the relationship. So I can't give too many negatives. But you've been in relationships yeah. before, so what are the cons? The cons are, if you're not on the same page, it can, you know, be just some, it could be a dead man walking, essentially. You know, mm -hmm. um, that could be a big con. It could be a waste of time. Um, it could be a negative experience if you're fighting and things like that. Um, uh, so, yeah. You've been single, obviously. Yeah. Did you ever love being single? Um, I did for like the first six months of being single. What'd you like about it? Um, I loved the freedom. It was like the first mm -hmm. time I had just been able to go shopping and not have to worry about saying, well, I'll be back in two hours to anybody. It felt so fucking good. Um, but then what I started to dislike about it was that because I'm 35 now, I was like, whoa, I actually do want to have kids. And mm. I do feel like the clock is ticking and holy crap. And then I started meeting people on dating apps. And I, I mean, I met a couple people that I liked, but generally the overall consensus was like, ugh, this is the selection. Fuck, I want out of this. I want to find my person so I don't have to be in this swamp is what it felt like. So that's what I didn't like. I felt like hopelessness about being but that single. Was, that was single and actively looking to yes. not that, be single. Right. As opposed to just being single and being like, this is fucking cool. Like right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think I in the few six months maybe that it was that I did enjoy being single. It was not answering to anybody. It was um, being able to spend time doing everything it is that you want to do. Um, but I think that I don't, I didn't, I surprisingly didn't love being single. Mm. because I don't have I'm a person who doesn't have many friends and so if I don't have a lot of friends I depend on my significant other to fill up that time and because I didn't have a significant other or a lot of friends You're and I lonely. mean I yeah I ended up just being lonely and I felt like I was kind of like Ugh. Mm -hmm. okay I'm not I don't like this let's let's get moving <laughs> to the next thing let's change this up a bit yeah How about you well I feel like she answered kind of the question because really it does depend on the time of your life and the pros yeah. and cons of being single or not single, right? Because there's certain periods of your life where it is more advantageous to be with somebody than without. But I think really for me, it's about balance, no matter what you're in. Because if you're in a we relationship- We were just talking about balance like the last episode. Oh, you were? Yeah, how I important it is. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> even listen to it. No, um, because- some of those things that you enjoy about being single, I believe, should be instituted when you're in a relationship. So you should have that downtime to go shopping and not say, hey, babe, I'm taking a day for myself, you know, and just go and do your own thing. Um, you should have some girlfriends that you go out with independent from your partner. So I think no matter what you're in, there can be pros and cons, but it's, it's really taking a look at where you're at in your life. And what you want. And what you want. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was in my early 20s, I could I could have cared less about dating. I almost feel like I was like asexual or something. Like I didn't grow mm -hmm. a vagina until I was like 25. <laughs> like I literally had nothing there. Like I didn't pee and nothing. Nothing was down there. Um, and I love that because I didn't. I didn't. Not peeing? Um, well, she that got, that, was that got a little uncomfortable after a few yeah, glasses of water. Continent. A few years of that. But uh, when I was in my early 20s, I don't advise people to be super into, unless you know for a fact you want to like get married right away and have kids at an early age. I don't think needing a boy, I mean, you can date around, but needing a significant other in your early 20s, I don't think should be a thing because you're just trying to figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think I enjoyed that so much that I didn't even, I mean, there weren't dating apps. There were, it really was a different time, but I wouldn't have probably used them even if I, was around like if I was in my 20s now my early 20s I don't think I'd be using the dating apps because it was like I just wanted to figure out where I wanted to go in life what I wanted to be who I even was and anyone that I meet this is definitely not going to be my person in the future because this who I, who I am now I know is not who I'm going to be in 10 years because I'm going to be on a trail trying to figure that out mm -hmm. so I think if you're in your early 20s take the pressure off and you can go on dates but don't try to find your your lifelong partner when you're 21 but if you do. But if you do, if that's your thing, go for it. But yeah. just know that that you're so young. I think overall, 
everybody has to sort of ignore these social standards because I think that's what heavily affects this question. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Do what feels is, right. Am I yeah. supposed to want to be in that's a relationship? Right. Am I, am, is it okay if I want to be single? Like people would always talk to me or women that I knew um, about my husband's group of friends. A lot of the wives of some of their friends would talk about his other friends who were still single and still dating girls and dating girls who were in their 20s when they were in their 40s and like be disgusted by it. And mm. I mean, there's an insecurity there. There's mm-hmm. a discomfort there. That's where a lot of that negative talk comes from and from, you know, social norms that exist. When I would see this as these guys are having a blast, they're living their life, they're not wanting to settle down. It's just whatever they wanted to do. They weren't being assholes. They weren't hurting women. I mean, some of them were. But most often they were not doing negative things to the people that they were interacting with. They were just enjoying their lives. And what they wanted at that time was not to be in a partnership. And if they did want to be in a partnership, even if it was short term, they did that and they communicated that to the women that they were with. And if it worked out, great. And if it didn't, then it ended between the two of them. I think overall it's just being okay with your choice and the pros and cons that both of you talked about, I think were excellent. For me, I will say the biggest pro, and it's not about being single or in a relationship. I I always like to have a person that I know I can rely on to to do things with. And I know that takes away from my own independence that I can just, okay, fine, I'll go do it myself. I've never been that person. Uh, and I, I like having that go to person for me, even though half the time he doesn't want to do what I want to do. But at least, you know, <laughs> he can be there for the times to go to functions or to do things that maybe I don't even want to do mm-hmm. uh, alone by myself. And I, I like having a partner. On the flip side, when he is away and I don't have to answer to anybody about anything that I'm doing in the house or with my kids. That is the most refreshing and, and thing in the, the entire balance. Balance. Yeah. It's the balance. It's the balance because exactly you wouldn't right. want that 100% of yeah. the time that's and you right. wouldn't want the other thing 100% yeah. of the time. <laughs> but He really nags me. No. <laughs> it's like kind of like the grass is greener type yeah. of situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I jokingly said the other day, uh, I don't have to worry about the grass is greener because for me there is no grass anywhere everything is terrible all the time <laughs> what, where's the dirt browner a, where's the dirt a, browner a uni- not e- really so unique actually as i've said like two other people that i know have a very right, similar situation which is so you. weird but you're in a nice situation where you, ha- you have that independence and you also have the relationship but that can get frustrating it, it can yeah so i've been trying to you i think i'm right now i'm really trying to appreciate where the situation is right now yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. you have that partner and you have that freedom. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I know, you know, like two years from now, it, you know, we're married or something and have kids. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my God, what was I doing? Why thinking, are you leaving this dish out right, again? Well, yeah. but why before did I want to like rush in and, you know, have all this right now? You know, I know I'll feel those it's feelings. It's not exactly your fault either, because we happen to live in a society that is just so instant gratification now. Like we can have access to things so quickly and relationships have become so disposable because of yeah. that too because we know we can just swipe right next week so sad <laughs> you know so like a lot of people aren't sitting with things whereas in our grandparents era like you know so they like would the really work guys in the it. town so I like, yeah, right exactly they go next door ring bobby brown no my grandparents met at an actual square <laughs> dance that's amazing. That is Aww. the cutest thing of all time. He asked my grandmother to yeah. dance. You used to like check off names of who they want to dance with. Like it was so transparent <gasps> before. Now it's like, yeah. hmm, I, I, I don't know if I want to dance with you. You don't know either. <laughs> right. Try and ask me and we'll see what happens. And I'm going to leave this yeah. bitchy face resting yeah. here. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever it's called. Resting bitch I'm going to be a bitch. Yeah, gonna... figure out what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, screw this show. Women fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a quick break and come back and then we have more questions from our listeners. So we'll be right back. We live in 2018. That means we live when messaging with women through text or through online is just a part of the dating process. And if you think you're not really good at it, you can practice with me. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to date you. So you don't have to worry about impressing me. All you have to do is worry about getting your skills to where they need to be to make her smile. So to start bantering with me, go to kristencarney.com slash dating help. That's kristencarney.com, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-C-A-R-N-E-Y.com. Slash dating help. 
Okay, we are back again with uh, Kim Seltzer. What, what's your company's name again? I always forget. Oh, I know, because it keeps changing. That's oh, why. okay, then that's why I forget. <laughs> well, you can find me at EliteImageMakeovers.com, yes. or you, you can go to SeltzerStyle.com. So mm. I'm in transition with the URL, but like either that. way, you can find me. Because, yeah, I think people were getting confused that I was just this makeover lady, and I, it's really... A, You're so much more than that. Yeah, inside and out, you know, kind of thing. But it's really looking at people from the outside in which is a little bit different approach Mm -hmm. because we're talking about like how to gain confidence from the outside. Sometimes you need that first in order for it to really integrate. Absolutely. I know, I know that I always do preach is like you, you know, work on the inside first, but sometimes just helping out that outside. I know it really can make a huge difference. It really can. Well, and then at one point it's like analysis paralysis. Like you can sit there and talk yourself Oh my God. I've been, yeah, that's where I get when I go to therapy analysis paralysis. That's I didn't know it was called something. Yeah. That's that's why I don't go to therapy. Yeah, get, well, because it's like talk, tick, talk, 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 talk. Where's do, the action? Do, right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and as a therapist, I, I was really frustrated. So, you know, I was I practiced traditionally for many, many years. And although I, th- I thought a lot of people changed, there were so many people who would get stuck and they wouldn't like create new habits. So they, you know, they would just talk, talk, talk and see well, people were in the office. You could tell them as well. Not only that, we yeah. were stuck in an office. I didn't see them in the yeah. real world. And people self report differently. Absolutely. Than what yeah. really is happening, right? Yeah, and so, how they yeah. perceive the world. Exactly. I always felt like I was on a date with my therapist because I wanted them to see me in the best light. Like I would be oh, open. Yeah. Totally. But I wanted them yes. to like love me. I and so I'd be a showman. When we were on, um, <laughs> that's how I was. Yeah. When we were on Loveline one time and somebody wrote in or called in and asked, like, how do you know how to choose a good therapist? And Dr. Drew said, you you can't have somebody that you get along with and like have a really good rapport with. It has to be somebody that challenges you and pushes you and calls you on your Yeah, because then you just end up, it's basically like coffee yeah. talk. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I mean, some people need that as well, just to vent for yeah. a bit, but you won't actually see change unless somebody's like, no, that's not true or right. calling you out on stuff. Okay, right. let's get to the, some questions. What is the best way to fight with a woman? I obviously uh, know not to get physical, but how do you do it so that it doesn't make things worse? Kevin. Well, I think you want to reframe the way you're looking at it. You don't want yeah, to fight with a woman. <laughs> I think you want to change your verbiage first. I, I think how do you work things out with a woman? How right. do you communicate with yeah. a woman? I think should be a better or Definitely. You're, I know I had like a funny reaction the way he wrote. Well, because I, I think that um, I, I really like to teach people like effective communication, you know, so that people can still air out their feelings. It it's not good to hold things in and pretend like everything is great either. Um, so it's not about fighting, but it's about allowing your partner to, first of all, say how they feel and also say how you feel so that you can come to some sort of consensus, compromise, and work things out. Yeah, I always think the best thing to do is is um, talk about things when you're both calm and in a good mood. If you start off, you're both frustrated, just walk away. Just don't, I don't yeah. think you, mm-hmm. I don't like just walking away. You have, for me, you have to verbalize. I'm going well, to Well, you can say away. I'm going to walk yes. away, but I don't. Just walking away drives me insane. Yeah. Yes. Well, don't just walk away. I mean, say, say that this isn't the best time. Let's both take our, our, our corners and cool off and then come back. Um, because I think that, uh, it's only going to escalate if you're already fighting and then you try to resolve it within the fight. It's, it's never, ever going to resolve. It's only going to get worse. So I, agree. I think. So far, I mean, again, I've said that I'm in a long distance relationship, so it's totally different. But anything that we've needed to communicate has been done in such a lovely way because we're both telling each other how much we love and support each other while we're doing it. Mm, Like you, mm -hmm. like my boyfriend will say, like, you can feel as sad as you want to feel and I'll still love you regardless of how sad you are right now Mm. or something. Not that that's a fight, but like he just puts that out there so I don't feel insecure about... It makes you feel safe. Super safe. Mm-hmm. And so nothing has escalated at all into a fight. This must be these Seattle man, men because... So Rena... It's all the granola up there. Show, <laughs> ...who was my neighbor, best friend. Um, she got a divorce about a year and a half ago. She's now like madly in love with somebody who's also in Seattle. They're so in a weird. relationship. <laughs> I bet you they oh, wow. each other. But, um, but so... I asked her a very similar question and that she's like, he does something wonderful with me that my ex-husband didn't do. Number one, he accepts and acknowledges my emotions, which he, she's like, that's absolutely wonderful. But he says to her, when things do get heated, he'll say things like, we're on the same side. 
Yes. I'm mm. on your side. And even just that sentence lets her breathe and know that she doesn't have to have her After you up. said that to me last week, I don't think it was on air, but you had said that he said that. I wanted to tweet it. And I'm not like a peace, love, and happiness person on Twitter. I just do like cynical jokes. But She's I really wanted to. Bitch. I am. <laughs> but I really wanted to remind everybody on Twitter, because everyone's constantly arguing about politics, everything. We're all on the same side. Mm-hmm. After you said that, it just kind of like hit me in terms of just even in the world, we're all on the same side. Mm-hmm. Like we're all just trying to survive as human beings. So I think if you go into a relationship, just look at each other as human beings, both aiming for the same thing, which is just happiness mm-hmm. and well, fulfillment. Let me ask you something. And I want to see if you guys are similar. I, I like to know what is going on in people's heads and why they react certain ways, especially mm-hmm. with my husband and people that I really care about. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the times I can... Um, misinterpret actions or behaviors or go give my own definition to what somebody else is doing based on experiences or my own insecurities. So last night, my husband and I were on the couch and we were having a a pretty heated discussion, um, which actually ended up going very well. But there was one point where I, I sent him over this resume from our, our nanny's leaving. <laughs> oh. not, it was heated. <laughs> oh, she's, well, we of course there's going to be fights. We have a lot now. of changes that are going on yeah. right now. And it's like, it, I mean, str- whatever. Yeah, what it's stressful. Feel? But I, it's like, uh, I feel horrible saying that's like my worst stress. But but it, it is a stress and coupled with a, a few other things that are happening. And I said, can I send you, you know, this girl's resume for you to look after? And I said, the thing is that, is that she's young. She's like 19. And he immediately got like really upset about that and closed off and turned away and like I forget what he even said to me but he like about him he just shut it off he just said like I won't look at it now but whatever the way that he said it and then he took a breath and he looked back at me and he's like this situation makes me really uncomfortable and anxious and that leads to my frustration so it's not about you and he rarely does that we're working on him communicating those things to me um but uh, for for fighting, that's really helpful because yeah. if he just spat out his anger mm-hmm. and frustration that's on his own side, I, I, I no matter what, I'm going to automatically take that as you're upsetting me. This is a situation I never want to talk about it again. Don't bring it up, and it's going to make me nervous because I don't want to have that energy in our relationship. And so him voicing that was very helpful because he's saying I'm not mad not you. at mm-hmm. you this is just something that makes me very anxious and that's extremely helpful so I think you know we're, we're talking about fighting and I know that a lot of, the, of times when we are heated as you said in the beginning it's hard to give to that other person because you have to take care of yourself but when you can calm down um, and you do have to talk about difficult things these little tools that we've discussed now are very helpful for both sides. If a woman can do it and a man can do it, because as we've said, we're all working together for the betterment of the relationship. We're all working together, but I also want to address the question because there are gender differences in the way that we communicate. And so, you know, how you talk to a woman is different than how you talk to a man. And like, for instance, you know, women, we use so many more words, (laughs) I think it's something like 2,000 more words a oh, minute or something. It's more? I don't mm-hmm. even know what the statistic is. So I think it's like 2,000 to 9,000 or something like is that. Like, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot. And so, but that's how we process. We like to tell stories. We like to spew. We don't mm-hmm. want a solution. Yes. Right? We oh, the, my dear right? Lord. Oh, my God. And But men get into the fix-it mode. So mm-hmm. when they hear all of you talking about all this stuff, men want, just want to come in like the superhero See, I keep getting influenced <laughs> by this blanket, um, and and save her it's and, this and image fix right it. Here that's doing it for exactly, you. Exactly, the, the Hulk. Yeah. And so he thinks he's he's providing for you, and she's like, I don't want you to provide a solution. That would happen a lot in my yeah. previous relationship, where it was like, I just wanted to talk. I just wanted to talk. I just mm-hmm. wanted to get it all out, and he just wanted it to have a solution and to be well, he boom. wants it to stop and for you to be happy right again. exactly right. Okay, and so, so their intent so is good but scenario mm-hmm. so with when a woman wants to just like spew out her emotions that it's not building up inside of her what is the best reaction that a man can provide during that time right and so there's two things i mean both both the man and the woman have responsibility here you know it's helpful when a woman says to the man before she spews i need to just vent so not that I'm looking for, you can even say I'm not looking for a solution, but can I just share with you my frustration that I had today? And, and for the man to provide that space for her and to just listen. 
Like we don't, we just maybe want to be held and, and, and reflective listening, saying, oh, it sounds like it was a really hard day today. Yeah, you just know, showing that you understand. Exactly. We just want to know that you're there for us oh, and I understand. I when I get my period too. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, that yeah. I don't know no. if they can really no, understand. I'm just saying, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's difficult. Like I'm just saying, like I, for guys are like, oh, I have to be so freaking emotional. But like, it's, it's really just, as you said, hugging and holding and Doesn't, saying, I right. get it. Fucking suck. Totally, mm -hmm. totally. And um, the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, this is something both sexes can do. Use the I message as much as possible and don't play the blame game I by message? using well, that's you. A very good point. What do you mean? So the you, you message, oh. you make me you so mad. When you, you said I message, I thought you meant on the phone, like texting oh. through I message. <laughs> there should be an app for there writing. Just be like, okay. Oh my God, there should. Oh my God. But then that will get out of control too and then nobody's communicating. But, but yeah. it can eliminate certain <laughs> words or like right. you can't send it, it like if it's too attacking. Yeah, and then it will yeah. include like nice emojis yeah. on its own. Oh, I know. Right. <laughs> Give people like, Billion dollar Some idea. We should patent Basically that. just gave it away. I know. All right. I'll edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the so iMessage. Engineers who listen to this show. Well. So, say, like, <laughs> the guy didn't take out the garbage and he's supposed to take it out every Wednesday. And so, the you message would be, like, you know, you really pissed me off. You were supposed to take the garbage out. Yeah. Uh, can you so just blameful. do it for once in your life? You know, that's the you message because you make me so mad it puts people on defensive. Versus using the I feel messages. I feel really frustrated when you don't take the garbage out. I would really, really appreciate Does it. Does that you turn do it. too much into the like, I, 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 me, me, me? No, because no. you're talking about your feelings and no one can take away your feelings. Well, it's yeah, different. tell me about it. I've tried several another. therapists yeah. and they won't take them away at all. <laughs> 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 Which is why you don't go to therapy, mm -hmm. right? Right. Okay, I think we've definitely conquered uh, yeah. this topic. And I, th I think some really good answers were shared that are very helpful. But overall, what I'm hearing is be more communicative. Don't use attacking words. Understand that we're all on the same side. And also understand that women are different than men. And that a hug and a little nod can go a very long way with a woman. And, and as well as verbalizing why you are reacting a certain way or acting a certain way is very helpful. Okay, this is a longer one, and it's about us breaking down a situation. Are you guys up for it? Mm. We're in a tent. Yeah, we're up for we're anything. In a okay, <laughs> so, hey, Marty and Kristen, and guest, longtime listener, first time emailer, and I need some input on some vibes I picked up from a girl during a wedding we both attended over the weekend. I'm the cousin of the groom, and she's the cousin of the bride. So, we have had a handful of cordial run ins over the years. Even some of the ones during the wedding were cordial, but I'll tell you about the ones I felt some vibes. So these, there's three vibes. <laughs> and he, uh, basi he basically wants to know, do you think there's something there? Vibe number one. Post-wedding, a small group of people from the bride's side came to the groom's house on a party bus where I poured her a few drinks. We, uh, when we got back, I was running around doing a few tasks while she was in the back singing my praises about being responsible and how she could talk to me about looking after her cousin. I heard the second hand from my cousin's brother. At the end of the night, while young people were saying goodbye to each other on the driveway, I brought up something I was mentioning during the day, uh, how the bride side tampered with a, a task my cousin was supposed to complete, which she heard me say. So I brought this up again, jokingly, and suddenly I felt a squeeze on my arm and she told me I was right. Before I could respond, her brother interrupted me to get them a few road beers. Drinking and driving. Uh, and be <laughs> and Might be on the party bus. Oh, right, right. And being a good host, I went to go get them. When I came back, I went to say goodbye to her by giving her a half hug, side hug, when she says, all I get is a hug, to which I respond, there are so uh, too many other people around for anything else right now. Family all I hope we said us. that jokingly. I hope so, too, mm -hmm. as opposed to, uh, yeah. Um, okay, vibe number two. So wait, 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 so what do you think of that vibe? Uh, Do you think anything was going on there because she squeezed his arm and said, you're right? Yeah, it does sound like something was, I mean, if she wasn't, she's not unaware of his presence. That's for sure. I mean, yeah. there's something going on with both of them, though. I feel. Yeah. Well, well, he's not trying to analyze his vibe. He knows there's something going on there. Yeah. But for, for her, so do you think that from what he just broke down... That his perception and reporting of it, yes. Yes. But we don't know how accurate that is either. Right. But based on what we know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, so I, I, mm -hmm. I thought that as well. Okay. So vibe. Well, why? Just because. 
Because that if a girl a squeeze is something, and if you're you don't all I care get about squeeze something. something, but all I get is a hug. Yeah, that's flirtation as well. That is that totally. may be like confident flirtation during a wedding that may not result to anything afterwards. Like that yes. may be in the moment. Like okay, I'm yeah, do people, this right now. girls, are, we love getting fun at weddings. Single yeah. girls, yeah, like it's fun for that us. It dissipates afterwards. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's definitely there. Okay, vibe number two. We meet at the reception hall, and she mentions looking after her cousin, and we talk, joke about that for about a minute. Why does the cousin need so much looking after? I think this is just like a run-on joke. Okay. Yeah. You're like... I don't know why... Like, like a uh, hate. Like, but like, why? why? <laughs> Comedy <laughs> sucks. Kristen <laughs> is over you. Um, about that for a minute, and went our separate ways to complete some tasks. During the family introduction... My cousin called out my name and mentioned how I was single and ready to mingle, to which I stood up and waved my hand. Looking over at her, I saw her smiling at me. I was hoping to dance with her, but with so many aunties and uncles watching from both families, I decided not to. Traditional Indian families. Our path did not cross again until the end of the night when she t uh, walked up to me while I stood at the bar and stood beside me. We made some small talk about how fun the reception was, and I told her she looked good in her outfit. Then she bumped me and told me, make sure you come by my house tomorrow. Traditionally, the groom side goes to the bride side, so I was going to go regardless. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. Like, yeah, she likes him. I, th so I think yeah. so, too. I think, I think, okay, so what, what makes you think that? Because she's purposely going up to him and interact. Or you break it down. I mean, if you say, make sure you come to my place tomorrow, you only say that to somebody that you're that you actually truly enjoying. And yeah. they haven't really talked that much. It's not like they're like, oh my God, and I can't wait for you to come to the house. So many nonverbal signals. Yeah. You know, the smile when he said he was single. and Yeah, all, yeah absolutely. Well, it's funny. What do you think? Uh, okay, I, I'm not part of an Indian family, so maybe this is completely I was just going to mention that, yeah. But um, w wouldn't that be like, okay, we're both, you're Jewish, right? Yeah. Okay, so wouldn't that be like a mitzvah if we were at another wedding and we had met up? Like, people would be like, yes, this is amazing. We brought them together. Right. Like, is it not, I don't actually know if it's not like that at Indian weddings. Like, I would think people would be happy to see I other people I actually went to an together. Indian wedding, and I'm happy to say it was my client yeah, <laughs> who got good. married. And yeah. it was, there's definitely different um, expectations and cultural differences that was, the, you know, I think the focus is really all on the bride and the groom. But again, Again, I think it's it's different for everybody. I'm not sure how like traditional this was and right. all that. So, okay. but that's a good point. Like, I wonder about just um, I know I, I have a lot of Indian clients, and you know, traditionally, sometimes you know, the man doesn't want to be impolite or like think that he should make the move because he doesn't. He's not sure. He doesn't want to overstep his bounds. But the good thing about a wedding is that you're basically already vetted. Like yeah. you're at this wedding because totally. you're part of this crew. You're part of this wedding because you're part of this crew. And if you, so there's, she's probably already very comfortable with him and willing to be open to someone at that wedding. And it might be him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I don't yeah. think for like pairing up, if there are families involved, they'd be like, oh yeah, go. Ahead. Yeah, totally. Good match there. I don't know. I yeah. did, that part I didn't really understand. Okay. Here's vibe number three. So we went to their house the day after the reception where we had another hello. Just asked each other how we were feeling and we both continued to say hi to other members of our respective families. I did not have a chance to talk to her much that day since the women were doing some traditional rituals, but there was mm. the one time when I was talking to her brother and I saw her watching me with a smile on her face. So I reciprocated with a smile of my own back in her direction. We said goodbye to each other with another half hug, side hug, mentioning how we look forward to seeing each other in the near future during family get-togethers. I'm wondering how to, okay, so th that's another vibe as well, but mm -hmm. then this is the follow-up to it. Uh, I'm wondering how to play this. My cousin and hers just got married, so there is the whole family aspect, but I'm not going to be a douche and cause any problems. We are definitely going to have a few more run-ins this summer, family get-togethers, dinners, etc. So that, so um, what should be my next move? Should I ask her for uh, her Snapchat so I can start a more regular conversation with her or just see how things develop over our next few run-ins. Any advice would be greatly, greatly appreciated and thank you in advance, Ball. I wonder how old he is. Well, he said Snapchat, Snapchat so young. immediately I'm like, okay, well, they're that, young. That's what I was thinking. Well, 30 and under. Is that, did he say 30 and under? No, but I'm assuming. Snapchat. Snapchat, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I would, this is the moment where you don't really want to let it drag out too long. She's I showed agree. you oh she's interested. God, you ask it. her out. Unless, you know, unless you're really truly worried about some sort of family dynamic that I don't think you should worry about. But also, what was the, not that this matters that much, but what was, what's the drinking etiquette like? I wonder the next day when they were at the event, if they were more sober or if they were sober at the wedding also. But um, 
I just imagine my own situation if that were to happen, like at the wedding, if I had a buzz and I was being all flirty, then the next day in the daylight, I was like, hi, like I had to be, you know, I'd be much more awkward. Um, But it sounds like they had a similar interaction the day after as they did the day before. So it sounds comfortable. It's been multiple times. Ask her out. What more do you need? Literally, what more do you need? Yeah. This is a situation where it's like, come on, dude, I want to take him by the collar and shake him a little bit. Ask her out. Yeah, Jeez. yeah. I'm just wondering what his hesitation's about and if it's a confidence issue or if he does this with other women. Yeah, I almost like, feel like this reaching out through mm-hmm. the email is like a procrastination tactic. Tactic. I think mm-hmm. he knows the answer. He's given or she's given him so many signals and like green lights to to go for it. And his hesitation, she's gonna like start losing that interest. So he needs to go for it. Yeah. Well, I, I just wrote a newsletter um, recently that uh, attraction has an expiration date. It does. Yes. So can you explain does. that yes. a little bit? But you wrote the article. Well, I know, but I want to. <laughs> I know. You explained it to us. You People have already heard my opinion on it. But maybe not. But I mean. No, but basically yeah. exactly what you just said. And I've had yeah. this happen several times in my life where somebody that I was very into, who I was excited about, who yeah. I thought was get, giving me the exact same, exact same vibe, at a certain point it peaks and then it it goes away and mm-hmm. it's very yeah. hard to get back. It takes a lot of work to get that back. And I don't know what happens if I suddenly see a different side in somebody or that I, I fault them for not taking action subconsciously. I don't actually know what goes on, but about four or five interactions max where I'm putting those vibes out. And even that's a little bit too long. If nothing happens, my attention goes elsewhere. Definitely. I think it's, it's like a, I think when you're feeling attracted to somebody, you're feeling the flow and the mm-hmm. the game of it or something, and then all of a sudden the game isn't playing back the way or at the speed that you're playing that you just kind of check out. Your brain just goes, well, what's the point next? Like, let me play the next game because it's no longer giving me the thing that I was seeking or that high that I was seeking, which was that attraction, if, if it's not re- being reciprocated. I think it goes back full circle what we were talking about before and that's confidence and that if there's hesitation there's usually a lack of confidence of some sort and that that hesitation can lose the attraction especially from a female point of view and um the other thing I was thinking about is (laughs) when you when you hesitate you get more in your head. Yes. And so when you get in your head, you, you, you'll you literally talk yourself out of things and it prevents you from taking action. And that's why even with approach, I tell people, like, just be more like a kid. You know, they don't have filters yet. You know, just, just what's that? Hi. <laughs> you know, just right. go for it. And it actually will get you out of that nervousness, if you, that just first interaction. And so I think he's literally talking to himself out of this thing if he doesn't do something now. Same. This is a little bit different, but when I was dating, there was this kid who was super cute and like, um, we had like a f- good enough time. It wasn't like we've, I don't, we weren't feeling like crazy sparks or anything like that but I was like he's really cute and really sweet and really funny and like we had a lot in common we had a lot to talk about and so he followed up and then I followed up and then when the last time I had followed up which was putting effort into like I went to like his Halloween party like he was like come over to my Halloween party so I went and then nothing happened after that for like three weeks Mm -hmm. and because I I had already put I did my part I was like okay I did my part it wasn't like I was head over heels but um I did my part, then it didn't really seem to go anywhere, and I just literally forgot about him. It it didn't mm-hmm. make or break my day. I wasn't dis- disappointed, but I thought, yeah, there was a possibility. And then a few weeks later, he followed up, and he was like, "How come I haven't seen you?" Let's. And I was mm-hmm. like, "I I went to you. like I reached out to you." The end. Like you you're like, like I moved on. Yeah, I literally <laughs> like I yeah. am now have a boyfriend. Or, you know, now I'm seeing somebody. Right. Um. And so. It, in that situation, it's like, I think he probably was just more like probably going on other dates. So I, so I don't think with him it was a confidence issue. I think it was like more of like a, oh, wait, maybe I do like her kind of thing. But by that point, I hey, was like, your opportunity. yeah, I was like, peace, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so there's two two ways I think you can miss out on the attraction. I right. think so too. And that is a great place to end our show in the fort, which was fantastic. And hopefully <laughs> there was no echo. I don't hear echo from the, my end. There is an echo. It's it's it. it's lighter, but it's there. Okay. It's still it's cozy, cozy though. though. This, this would just have really to be a thick blanket. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was trying to. It's hot. Out. I know. This was trying to be, uh, you know, compromising between. Yeah. I mean, at least the table helped. Anyway, 
you guys are awesome for sitting under a table with me. Kim, <laughs> especially. Yeah. Thank you oh for doing God, this. No, it, I loved being in the superhero power. And I'm glad. I'm glad that you like it. Amongst you, too. Tell it's people again how to get in contact with you. I know there's two websites. Yes, yeah, so you can go to seltzerstyle.com is probably the easiest to remember. Okay. And also I have a new podcast out, Charisma Quotient. You can check it out on iTunes where I talk about style and confidence and all sorts of fun stuff. And, and Marnie that. was on there. I was. Yes, your yes. episode's coming out. My cue was lined up. I was like, up. didn't I do that months ago? Yeah, yeah. It, it was before, because you did it before I even launched. Oh, yeah. So we had, yeah, you're in okay. the queue. Oh, see, so you have to lady. check it out. I like that anymore. You used to have a queue. <laughs> oh, you used to have a queue. No queue anymore. <laughs> and, you. Way. and what about you? Mentally yeah, just chill, your new, sh- your new product that's coming out. Did you send me? I'm actually sending it to you today because, and I know this isn't interesting to the listeners, but my microphone on my phone has been broken and so I tried to record the things but there were clicks so I went to the Apple store yesterday it's all fixed perfect the reason I have eye makeup on right now is because I'm going home and I'm taping oh perfect my because I was going to try to do it before I came but then I ran out of time so yes so Kristen explain the product so um I wrote like a guide Mm -hmm. for banter and how to banter with women she wrote down how to banter oh I love it created a formula witty banter yeah Yeah. created a formula if there's anybody who could do this you would be the one to be able to do it. And, and I have s- some real life examples I added in yeah. and uh, some fake examples I wrote, but it's it, it's super helpful. I really am cool. um, impressed with myself that I was I'm able to read with it. Because so I was like, well, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain, you know, how to tie my shoe. How do I explain how to banter? But then I mm. it she became did. like. She did a really good job at yeah. it. Yeah. So you should check it out. Uh, it'll be good. Yeah. And uh, hopefully. I don't know how to sell products. I, like, I don't I'm not selling it yet, but. No, but I mean, like, it. with my voice. Like, you should listen to it. It's great. Yeah, you just did. You, you, just, did. you did it very authentically before you okay. tried to sell. Yeah, so. and then I got in my head, and that's what happens when you yeah, get you're in like, my head. confidence. But that product will be available in a few months once you put it together all the other bits and pieces for it but it's pretty awesome cool and i'm happy about it um but yeah you can download new episodes of the ask women podcast every thursday at 5 p.m pacific don't be an idiot and download individual episodes please go and subscribe and also pass this show on to your friends share 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 and we appreciate any type of sharing possible um you guys are awesome we will see you next week Bye. Bye.